Singing and Marching Along. In our series about German folk music, its traditions and customs, we present Music for Tourists. Ich hab mein Herz in Heidelberg verloren, in einer lauen Sommernacht. Ich war verliebt bis über beide Ohren, und wie ein Rösen hat ihr Mund gelacht. Und als wir Abschied nahmen vor den Toren, beim letzten Kuss, da hab ich's klar erkannt, dass ich mein Herz in Heidelberg Hello there. Let's all sing that together now, because I'm sure you know this old folk song from the German town of Heidelberg. Here's an English translation of the words for you. I lost my heart in Heidelberg to you. On a warm summer night, I was in love, so much in love with you. And your mouth laughed like a summer rose. And when we took our leave outside the gate, with that last kiss, I knew then for sure I'd lost my heart in Heidelberg. To you, my dear. My heart, it beats where the Necker flows. That song is one of the best-known folk songs, not only in Germany, but also abroad, and its widespread popularity is due largely to the musical and operetta versions of The Student Prince, which was performed in many of the principal cities of the world. On Broadway, it was a terrific success, whilst in Tokyo, it's revived every year, each time in a new stage setting. Here briefly is the story. In old Heidelberg, the student prince Karl Heinz is studying, drinking and loving, and ultimately, he loses his heart in Heidelberg utterly and completely. And this song became a worldwide hit. Everybody was singing or whistling it. And when tourists come to Heidelberg today, they will find the romantic background to this student musical in real life. And when visiting the town, one will hear this popular old Heidelberg song again and again, a song which has made this ancient university town known and indeed famous all over the world. With this song and with the singing and drinking students, tourists today are offered the genuine atmosphere of old Heidelberg. Of course, there are similar tourist attractions in other German cities, and similar old German folk music. You only have to visit the famous Hofbräuhaus in Munich, the Black Forest, the green meadows of the Alpine country in summer, or the Raperbahn, the famous amusement quarter in Hamburg. In this latter place, you're certain to hear old songs like this. Lieder von der Reeperbahn singt man auf dem Ozean, man singt sie auch an Land. Denn die Reeperbahn, denn die Reeperbahn, denn die Reeperbahn ist überall bekannt. Sonntagnacht auf der Reeperbahn, als ich zwei in die Augen sah. Morgen früh um acht. Das gibt's nur auf 
Was wir am Mord ohne Ripperbahn, ohne Ripperbahn, ohne Ripperbahn. Hamburg wäre nur ein Schiff ohne Kahn, Hamburg wäre eine Hände ohne Hahn. Was wir am Mord ohne Ripperbahn, ohne Ripperbahn, ohne Ripperbahn. Hamburg wäre ein Löwe ohne Zahn, denn das Schönste ist und bleibt die Ripperbahn. Zum Hawaiis, ob du Mädel hast oder auch keins, amüsierst du dich, denn das findet sich auf der Reeperbahn nach zum Hawaiis. Wer noch niemals im Lauschigen hat, einen Reeperbahn unbegemacht, ist kein Kanal ich, denn er kennt dich nicht, mein St. Pauli, St. Pauli bei Nacht. I suppose it's an arguable point whether those songs can really be described as folk songs or whether they've already reached the status of pop, but there's no doubt about their popularity. And folk music from Hamburg would be incomplete without those songs about the Raperbahn, because for sailors and tourists is such an important part of this great North Sea port. And just as the Raperbahn is a part of Hamburg, so is the Hofbräuhaus a part of Munich. And for the tourists as well as for the local folk, if only for the fun of it, the praises of this place are sung like this, for instance. In München steht ein Hofbräuhaus, eins, zwei, super. Da läuft so manches Bässchen aus, eins, zwei, super. Da hat schon mancher Brauch. Gezeigt, was er so vertragen kann. Schon früh am Morgen fing er an. Und spät am Abend kam er heraus. So schön ist im Hofbräuhaus. Da, wo die grüne Isar fließt, wo man mit Grüß Gott dich grüßt, liegt meine schöne Münchner Stadt die ihresgleichen nicht hat. Wasser ist billig, rein und gut, nur verdünnt es unser Blut. Schöner sind Tropfen goldenen Weins, aber am schönsten ist eins. In München steht ein Hofbräuhaus, eins, zwei, super. Zeigt, was er so vertragen kann. Schon früh am Morgen fing er an. Und spät am Abend kam er heraus. So schön ist im Hofbräu aus. Nowadays, even the most widely travelled tourists maintain that there's hardly any other city in the world where one can have such a good time as in Munich. With its tasty white sausages, with its speciality, the large radish, and its potent beer in those giant mugs, and where there's not only one Hofbräuhaus, but any number of others, large and small, with their inimitable Bavarian atmosphere. And of course, we mustn't forget the Munich October Festival. It was first celebrated in 1810 as just a simple popular festival for the people of Munich. 
the occasion being the marriage of Crown Prince Ludwig of Bavaria to Princess Therese von Sachsen-Hildburghausen, which the Bavarians and the people of Munich celebrated on their famous Theresien Wiese, a vast open space in the city named after the princess. And ever since then, the October festival has been celebrated there every year, and has long since become a major tourist attraction. Visitors from home and abroad, indeed from all over the world, pour into this huge fairground to amuse themselves for 16 whole days. At last year's October festival, there were seven large beer marquees on the site, each of them with seating accommodation for 4,500 people, with public ox and pig roasting, hot dog stands and lots of chicken roasts, pretzel stalls and kiosks of all kinds. In fact, they set up a whole street of these stands and stalls, having a total length of five kilometres. And in between, there are the roundabouts and sideshows on this largest fairground in Europe. Six big dippers, seven dodgem car tracks, 24 different rides, chairplanes, swings and ferris wheels, 75 shies and shooting galleries, wall of death riders, ghost trains, animal shows and a host of other attractions. According to the latest statistics, 3,000 waitresses serve the 150,000 stone mugs filled with delicious Munich beer to quench the thirst of the millions. No, I'm not exaggerating, because 4 million litres of beer were drunk at the last October festival. At the October festival nowadays, there's the constant blare of fairground music, hits and pop music. And yet, musically speaking, it's always Bavarian folk music that predominates. And I don't mean just those very loud beer tent tunes, but rather tunes like this, which is called Lustiges München, or Jolly Munich.
But now let's get away from such scenes of mass tourism and visit some of the smaller, more remote tourist attractions, all of which have their own folk music to offer. In Franconia, in South Germany, for instance, lies the quaint old little town of Rottenburg ob der Tauber. This medieval town on the River Tauber is still the scene several times a year of the historic shepherd's dances, an old custom dating back to the Middle Ages. In the market square outside the town hall and the ancient patrician houses, 16 couples assemble in their colourful costumes to take part in lively dances. Watched by crowds of tourists, this old traditional custom is a sight not to be missed. One of the most delightful landscapes in Germany is the Lüneburg Heath, where every year the Heather Blossom Festival is celebrated, and this too has developed into an important tourist attraction. Girls in bright costumes, the blaze of colour from the blossom and the scent that fills the air, and then the lilting folk tunes that are played, all form an unforgettable experience for the eye, the nose and the ear. Many tourists witnessing this festival for the first time make up their minds to go back there the following year to see it all over again. And there's one old song they'll never forget. It's called Green is the Heath. Als ich gestern einsam ging, auf der grünen, grünen Heid, kam ein junger Jägersmann, trug ein grün frequented German holiday districts like the Alps, the range of folklore performances is naturally very great. Nearly every village in Upper Bavaria and in the Allgäu has its own folklore evenings and festivals in national costumes. And even though nowadays they no longer have very much to do with real folklore, the music and the dances have retained their folkloristic appeal, despite the crowds of tourists. Let's listen now to a musical excerpt from one of those folklore recitals somewhere in the Algoi.
Now, there's also another way in which German folk music is brought to the ears of the tourists. As you probably know, in modern tourism, the souvenir is quite an important factor. And for some years now, souvenirs with German folk music have been sold with tremendous success. I mean, the various kinds of musical boxes. There are cigarette boxes, which play the first couple of bars of an old folk song as soon as you open the lid. Then there are pretty little dancing dolls in filled schnapps bottles, which, on the press of a button, play A Boy Saw a Rosebud Fair. And there are miniature beds containing equally miniature dolls, which sing Brahms' Cradle Song. Or Every Day is Not Sunday, to mention just a few of these musical souvenirs. There's a special demand for the Christmas musical boxes, which play something like this. The many brass bands one comes across in so many towns and villages in Germany are also a special attraction to tourists. They usually wear smart uniforms, such as huntsmen's, archers or firemen's, or the fantasy uniform of some club or other. And in the Ruhr, Germany's big industrial area, the miners' bands are especially popular. The musicians wear black trousers and black tunics, with shining silver emblems representing their particular miner's club or guild. And when one of these bands marches through the town, it'll most likely play the old miner's march, Good luck, the pitman's coming. Recently, the Romantic Railway has been playing a special part in all this tourist nostalgia. The enthusiasm displayed for the good old steam train, now long since overtaken by the modern diesel locomotive, is truly astonishing. And quite a number of country railway lines that had been closed down have been revived by these train enthusiasts, who've got hold of old disused steam engines and put them back into service. And they go riding along on them, with passengers of course and singing the appropriate songs. One of the prettiest routes of these old lines is a famous Swabian railway, which is still in existence today. It puffs along through 11 kilometres of idyllic valleys from Aachen to Ottenhofen in the Black Forest. The song to which it owes its continued existence sounds in its modern rhythmic form like this.
to end our program today, we invite you to listen to that same song in its original form as a folk song. Auf der Schwäbsche Eisenbahn gibt es viele Haltstationen, Schnurke, Ulm und Biberach, Mecker, Bayer, Dulles, Bach. Trulla, 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 la, trulla, 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 la, Schnurke, Ulm und Biberach, Mecker, Bayer, Dulles, Bach. Auf der Schwäbsche Eisenbahn dürfen Kier und Exler fahren, Burpe, Mädler, Weib und Mann, alles, was bloß zahlen kann. Trulla, 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 la, trulla, 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 la, Auf die schwäbische Eisebahn, wollt der Maler Bayer fahren, Gott am Schalter lupft der Hut, ein Billett lässt ihn so gut. You have been listening to Music for Tourists, another program in the series Singing and Marching Along, about German folk music, its traditions and customs. It was produced in the Cologne studios of the transcription service of Radio Deutsche Welle, the voice of Germany.